from around the globe. In sold out arenas and humble churches. From out on the streets. To your screen. And now, the time and what must be done. On this edition of Farrakhan Speaks. Greetings to you. I am Minister Louis Farrakhan, National Representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, that great preacher of freedom, justice, and equality to the Aboriginal people of the earth and a warner to the United States government and the American people and the nations of the earth the eternal leader of the nation of Islam. I am most grateful and thankful to Allah for another opportunity to share with you some of the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I would like to thank you, the viewers, for your support and telling your friends about the broadcast and thank you to my social media brothers and sisters who are tweeting and retweeting the salient points in the lecture as it touches them. I think we should strive to fill the airwaves of the social media or the internet with intelligent discourse rather than the vanity and useless foolishness that is constantly being used on the internet, on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter pages. I would also like for the ministers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad under my leadership to respond intelligently to the people who are raising questions, even those who doubt the truth of what we are saying and are exclaiming their vitriol and bitterness to what they are hearing from us. But never, ever should we go down in the gutter with those who choose to go there. I want uh, Brother Jesse Muhammad and our Twitter uh, fans to know that I am interested in reading everything that you have to say and to answer your questions if it pleases Allah, if you would desire to ask them. I answer all my Twitter questions and I've just about completed all of the 600 or more questions that came to me from our town hall meeting. I think I have 50 more questions by the grace of Allah to answer. So whatever troubles you, whatever disturbs you about the message of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the scripture says, seek and ye shall find, ask and it shall be given unto you, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Now, it seems though that some of you are so upset by what I'm saying that you write disrespectful tweets and words calling Farrakhan Crazy Louie. Of course, that is your prerogative to be cheap and disrespectful if that is what you feel, but I'm in excellent company when you call me crazy or a madman. When you refer to me as a madman or as crazy, you put me in good company. 
in the company of the prophets and messengers of God who challenged the powers of their day with truth. But look at what is written in the Holy Quran in the 68th chapter titled Al-Kalam, the pen. It reads, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, by the inkstand and the pen, and that which they write, by the grace of thy Lord, thou art not mad. And surely thine is a reward never to be cut off. And surely thou hast sublime morals, so thou wilt see, and they too will see, which of you is mad by the inkstand and the pen? Whose inkstand and whose pen? Allah says in the Quran in the first chapter that he revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, read, he said, Read in the name of your Lord who taught man by the pen what man knew not. Read. Well, I have been reading the writings of God's prophets and every one of them that came to a powerful government that had gone wrong and faced them with truth revealed by God himself these prophets were called madmen. You know, America, when you are used to people being afraid of your immense power and the immense power of our government, as those were afraid of the immense power of those governments in which the prophets appeared, yet the prophet was unmoved by the power of the government and that government's ability to do him harm. So naturally, if he's unfazed by your great power, which has you drunk on yourself, then of course you would see him as a madman. Blacks who stood up against the atrocities committed upon them by whites in the South or the North were always referred to as, you know, crazy niggers. But the crazy nigger either was killed or you left him alone because you felt that he had to have lost his mind to challenge you. Then some of you tweet and write and say, that Farrakhan should be exterminated ASAP, as soon as possible. You cannot reason with what I'm saying. So the first thing that comes into your mind is that Farrakhan should be killed. Is that the way you do when you cannot support your argument with facts? Is that the way you do when you have nothing to cast at the truth, except truth that will bear more witness to the truth? Because certainly when you cast falsehood at truth, you have no power with falsehood to undermine the power of the truth. There again, you put yourself in the position of those who couldn't take the truth of the prophets of their time and sought to kill them. Well. I must respectfully say to you and, and even to those uh, of my own black uh, brothers and sisters and even those who follow me who feel that I can't be touched. Oh, I, I don't think it's wise to think that way. Of course, they can touch me if it pleases Allah. They can arrest me if it pleases Allah. They can bring me before their courts if it pleases Allah. But to take my life, no, unless that pleases God, and I don't think it does, you can't have my life. And just the thought in your mind of being desirous of 
taking my life when all I am doing is giving you the truth that will guide you away from God's destructive power. Well, if you think like that, you've already sentenced yourself to what you desire for me. So the scripture tells you how you should handle the servants of God, particularly myself. If you don't like me, well, I'm not loved by everybody, but the most important thing, I am loved by the two that back me, and that is the great Mahdi and the Messiah who has power over all things. So if you don't like me, that's on you, but I'm going to continue to tell the truth. Look at what it says in the book of Psalms, in the 105th uh, chapter, the 15th verse, it says, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. And then in another place in the Psalms, it says, Kiss the son, lest he be angry with you, and you won't tarry but a little while. For the God that I serve sits in the heavens and laughs at you. And the scripture says the Lord will have them in derision. In another broadcast, I will talk about what's in the heavens where he sits that you should be troubled over. But that's for another time because God is backing me and his Messiah to talk to you as I am speaking not out of hatred for you, but out of concern that you have reached the end of your rope. And if you've ever seen a hanging, which of course we black people in America have seen much of, but when that uh, a person gets to the end of that rope, the rope yanks the neck and breaks your spine and there's no more to you. Well, that is where you are. You are facing your destruction. And I'm trying to warn you in hopes that you might save yourselves and your children. So to those who may be inside the nation or outside the nation that desire to take my life. Oh, just having the desire has already put you in the crosshairs of the two that back me. And believe me, you can't do me any harm except that which Allah permits. Now, you would be wise. If you can't deal with me with facts, and if you can't dispute what I say with truth, then if what I say is false, you can defeat me with your truth. But I don't think you can. So to those of you who think that a man who talks like me should already be dead, Yes, this is some of my own people who right now fear for my life because of the truth that these broadcasts of the time and what must be done are bringing to the American people and to the world because they know that whenever a black man speaks like I am speaking, they're usually killed or put in prison, assassinated. You know they assassinated Dr. King, they assassinated Malcolm X, you assassinated many others. So that is your pattern. I'll tell you like it reads from the Holy Quran when they didn't like Noah and got tired of Noah's preaching. Do you know what Noah said to them? He said, tell them, this is God telling Noah to tell the people, gather all that you have of your forces 
and give me no respite. Don't let up on me because I surely am not going to let up in the preaching of this word. So come against me then with all you have because it won't be enough to stop what God has in store for you. So you would be wise. If you don't like what I say, then go off somewhere with your scholars and reason with what I say. And if you find me to be truthful, then your duty is to aid me, not fight me. And that will take some of the weight off of you that is on you as you see this broadcast. So instead of seeing Farrakhan as a hater of America, you should see me in the light of one who loves the land in which I was born and sees America as the greatest country in the last 6,000 years. And I am warning you because I want to see the country avert the consequences of her evil by encouraging her in the short time that is left to really change, a change that God will believe in, not a change that the ignorant believe in, but a change that God will know that you really want to save your lives and the lives of your children and carve out a new future for yourself. Of course, I think I'm being very patriotic. And I thank the founding fathers for the freedom of speech that they guaranteed in the Constitution of the United States of America. And those of you who think I hate the country and you tell me I should go back to Africa or I should run to North Korea or someplace, well, I'll tell you, the whole earth is ours. And so we won't have to run anywhere, but maybe if you keep up your foolishness, you won't have any place to run yourself. So. You media people, I need to give a shout out to you because media, you are under control. And as long as the fourth estate is not free, then how will the masses of the people be able to know when their government and their leaders have become tyrannical? Dear believers, don't fear for me or for yourself. And don't go away thinking that they're not going to try to put their hands on me or bring me before their courts. Of course, this is already written and it is in their plans. It's going on now as we speak, but don't worry about that because all their planning is against themselves, but they don't know it yet, but you will sooner than you think. So if you come against me and try to deceive some of those around me, that a Judas will rise up from among those disciples, well, go right ahead. But I warn you, my Judas brother or sister, the scripture says it would be better that you had not been born or that a millstone had been around your neck and you had been dropped in the depth of the sea. In the sermon that Jesus made on the mount, the last of his beatitudes, he said, quote, blessed are ye when men shall persecute you and revile you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Then comes the hard part. Jesus said, rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Great is your reward in heaven, for so did they the prophets that were before you. Do I look like 
I'm not happy. Even as I'm speaking with you, my skin lightens up. I'm rejoicing because I'm walking in the path of the prophets of God. And now, last week, we shared from the Holy Quran in the 45th chapter or surah called The Kneeling in the section titled The Doom, verse 28. And it reads, and thou will see every nation kneeling down. Every nation will be called to its record. This day you are requited for what you did. And the verse before that speaks of the hour, the hour of the doom. And remember and keep this in your mind with this broadcast. An hour has 60 minutes and a minute has 60 seconds. And the hour refers to the doom. It is the number of the beast for it is the number of a man, 603 score and six more on this as this broadcast proceeds. As I said last week, we will continue to examine America's deceit and wicked practices under the guise of her foreign policy. Let's begin. A female author by the name of Naomi Wolf wrote that the first step to fascism in America is to invoke a terrifying internal and external enemy. She said that creating a terrifying threat, hydra-like, secretive, evil, is an old trick. She reminds us that the Reichstag fire of February 1933 was swiftly followed in Nazi Germany by passage of the Enabling Act, which replaced constitutional law with an open-ended state of emergency. The Reichstag is the German Congress and Hitler's followers secretly set it on fire and claimed that Germany was under a terrorist threat. Let's look at some of our presidents and what they have said and what they have done to cause the loss of life of hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands of American patriots who love their country but have been constantly deceived by their leadership. In 1898, the United States wanted control over Puerto Rico, the Philippines, and Guam. So President William McKinley lied about an explosion on board the USS Maine anchored in Havana Harbor that killed 260 patriotic, innocent servicemen. McKinley and the, the media said Spain did it, but they offered no evidence. Does this sound familiar? Because of that war, the United States gained control over Cuba so that the island could be open to the United Fruit Company and the other American corporations. America in that war took Puerto Rico, the Philippines, and Guam. In 1913, when the Federal Reserve Act was signed by Congress and signed into law by President Woodrow Wilson, from 1913 to 2013, there have been 100 years of war. And remember, in 1912, even up to December the 26th of 1913, 
the debt that America had was only two billion dollars. One hundred years later in this century of war, America is now nearly 17 trillion dollars in debt. But when you add up Social Security, entitlements, Medicare, Medicaid, pension funds, it's nearly 60 to 70 trillion dollars. How did we get into World War I? From the book, The Untold History of the United States by Oliver Stone and Peter Kuznick, published by Simon and Schuster last year, 2012. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria by a Serbian so-called fanatic on June the 28th, 1914, triggered a chain of events that in August of that year plunged the world into the most brutal orgy of bloodshed and destruction humanity had yet, yet seen. That war in 1914, Britain wanted America to get involved in that war. But our president, Woodrow Wilson, got hit into his second term on the slogan that he kept America out of war. But in 1917, he was allowed or committed America to the First World War. How did it happen? Well, in May of 1915, Germany sank the British liner Lusitania, leaving 1,200 dead, including 128 Americans. And despite initial disclaimers, the ship was in fact carrying a large cargo of arms to Great Britain. Though Wilson had won re-election in 1916 on the slogan, he kept us out of war, he was increasingly coming to believe that if the United States didn't join the war, it would be denied a role in shaping the post-war world. Germany's resumption of submarine warfare in this, this area of the Atlantic and blowing up the Lusitania. America claimed to be neutral, but America was sending arms to Britain to fight against Germany. So Germany torpedoed the Lusitania. And then Woodrow Wilson's real motive, of course, was his belief that only by entering the war could he be guaranteed a voice in negotiations on April 2nd, 1917, Woodrow Wilson asked Congress for a declaration of war saying that the world must be made safe for democracy. And right after World War I, Woodrow Wilson had a role to play in establishing the League of Nations. Now let's look at World War II. World War II started in Europe on September the 1st, 1939. And it is written that Roosevelt met secretly with Prime Minister Churchill in Newfoundland. And the two leaders drew up the Atlantic Charter. Churchill wanted Roosevelt to lead America into war. But America did not wish to get involved in that war. But Roosevelt said to Churchill he would wage war, but he would not declare it and that he would become 
more and more provocative if the germans did not like it they could attack american forces everything was to be done to force an incident that could lead to war is that what we're seeing now is that what we're hearing on our television stations now is north korea being forced into a position to strike first to give america the excuse to go to war let's see see her behavior is consistent japan invaded french indochina in 1941 seeking the resources and bases needed to fortify its position in the region the united states responded by completely barring petroleum exports to japan its supplies dwindling japan's leaders decided to secure oil from the dutch east indies but they feared that the u.s fleet at pearl harbor could interfere with their efforts well my beloved brothers and 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 sisters many great americans warned us that the cryptographers had already decoded the messages sent by the japanese to their submarines and their navy and in doing that america knew what the japanese were going to do in fact they wanted japan to make that strike in fact they maneuvered japan into such a strike as a result of that america entered world war ii at the end of that horrific war they say a quarter of a million american young men lost their lives and over 50 million human beings were destroyed in world war two some have said and it is evident that churchill wanted america to get into the war and they felt that the allies could not win without america and all our efforts to cause the germans to declare war on us had failed so the conditions we imposed on japan to get out of china was so severe that we knew that nation could not accept those terms. Now, um, the Prime Minister, uh, former Prime Minister of Great Britain, Margaret Thatcher, her ambassador to Kuwait, do you remember? Gave Saddam Hussein the okay to go into the 19th province of Iraq that is now called Kuwait because it was said that Kuwait was extracting oil from wells that belong to Iraq. So it was mentioned to the American ambassador and it was mentioned to the British. The American ambassador said, it's okay with us. But after Saddam Hussein went in, that's when he was told, you must get out. Margaret Thatcher influenced George Bush to get out of uh, Kuwait. The terms were great, and so war took place. And in Iraq, America dropped explosives filled with depleted uranium that is still causing terrible side effects, not only among the Iraqi people, but also side effects that are ill affecting the American soldiers. My dear brothers and sisters, this same idea or thought today is being used against 
Iran. These uh, sanctions that make it difficult for Iran to do what Iran needs to do for her country and her people is trying to force Iran to make an attack in the Strait of Hormuz. But Iran is a follower of the Quran. And the Quran forbids a Muslim from being the aggressor. And it even says Allah hates aggression. So uh, Iran is not going to bow to those provocations. But the question is, will North Korea? Let's go to the Gulf of Tonkin. The official story was that North Vietnamese torpedo boats launched an unprovoked attack against a U.S. destroyer on routine patrol in the Tonkin Gulf on August the 2nd, 1964, and that the communists followed up with a deliberate attack. Two days later, none of this was true. President Lyndon Johnson used the fabricated incident to justify a momentous escalation in the war, ultimately leading to over 50,000 American deaths, millions of Vietnamese casualties, and many, many tens of thousands of Americans suffering the after effects of war. You know, I know it's difficult for us to wrap our minds around wickedness so great that people would plot to get the country into war at the expense of young patriotic men and women. But this is exactly what has happened. And this must be why Paul said, we war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness that is in high places. So we entered the war in Vietnam and after Vietnam in the modern era now. Here we are, 9-11, the World Trade Center destroyed. And of course, the story that was told was that it was in fact Muslims. I held a press conference on six, September the 16th 2001, and I warned President George W. Bush to be careful of how he responded to such an act of the destruction of nearly 3,000 lives. But remember, at Pearl Harbor, we lost nearly 3,000 again, and the Navy was almost completely destroyed to get America into war. What I'm trying to say to us is our lives mean little. When those in high places see a bigger gain through war. Well, a few days after 9-11, and the press conference, I mentioned that this was the beginning of a war against Islam. Now, there are scientists today who say that Muslims had nothing to do with the destruction of the World Trade Towers. And we had some of these great scientists to visit the nation of Islam 
at our Savior's Day convention and gave irrefutable truth and facts that would make a brass monkey sit up and take notice. Now, let's look at some of the questions around the bombing of the World Trade Center. Right before 9-11, unusually high levels of put options were placed on the stocks of American and United Airlines and corporate tenants of the World Trade Center. These are market bets that give the better a profit if stock goes down. According to Bloomberg Business Use, this would be one of the most extraordinary coincidences in the history of mankind if it was in fact a coincidence. How was the FBI able to release a list and photos of the hacker hijackers within hours and why have at least five of the 19 alleged hijackers turned up alive and well living in Saudi Arabia? How could these alleged hijackers have known that multiple classified air defense drills were planned for the morning of 9-11, leaving only two fighter jets available to protect the entire northeastern United States? Why was Attorney General Ashcroft warned to stop using commercial airlines prior to 9-11? How come the hole in the Pentagon was 18 feet across, but the wingspan of a 757 is 146 feet? Hmm. Things to consider, wouldn't you think? How come a little single-engine Piper PA-28 plane that crashed into the IRS office in Texas did more damage to that building than a 757 jetliner did to the Pentagon? How does a pilot that failed his lessons on a one-engine propeller plane pull off maneuvers only a highly trained airline pilot could do. A 270 degree turn at 500 miles an hour descending 7,000 feet in two and a half minutes into a direct hit. Well, all of this makes us wonder, was this another lying wonder that is spoken of by Paul? The U.S. Maine was a lying wonder. People wondered, how did we get into that war? World War I, the lies told. World War II, lies told. Vietnam, lies told. And here, in the lead up to the war with Iraq and Afghanistan, all of the members of the Bush government told lies. I'm sorry, Condoleezza Rice, you lied. Colin Powell lied. Cheney and Rumsfeld lied. Bush lied. What was the lie that Iraq and Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction? So America bombed. It was called shock and awe. But did they find weapons of mass destruction? No. Another lie. And thousands of Americans were hurt or killed. And hundreds of thousands of Iraqis were destroyed. In Pennsylvania, Flight 93, 
Why was there no visible airplane debris where Flight 93 supposedly crashed in Pennsylvania? Only a smoking hole in the ground. No bodies, no seats, no wings, no luggage. What about the World Trade Center? Six months before the 9-11 attacks, the World Trade Center was purchased by the Silverstein Group for 3.2 billion, even though those buildings were covered in asbestos, an obvious health hazard, and in need of demolition. But Larry Silverstein took out insurance coverage on the property, which fortuitously covered acts of terrorism. The result was a potential payout of 4.6 billion, which was paid out. And the result of court ruling, Silverstein made a huge profit off of the 9-11 attacks. At least one security guard at the World Trade Center reported the abrupt removal of explosive sniffing dogs five days prior to 9-11. Brothers and sisters, no steel-framed building before or since 9-11 has ever collapsed due to fire. The World Trade Center buildings were designed to withstand the impact of airliners. The melting point of steel is about 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit, and the temperature of jet fuel fires does not exceed 1,800 degrees. Why were two distinct spikes, one for each tower, seen in seismic records before the towers collapsed. How could the World Trade Center towers collapse in free fall speed only 11 seconds, World Trade Center 1, in 9 seconds, World Trade Center 2, speeds that approximate that of a ball dropped from a similar height with no air resistance? Why did so many people, including New York, fire department personnel report hearing many explosions at street level prior to the towers falling. And by the way, who were those men on top of a van with a tripod camera across the Hudson River filming the towers before the first plane hit? How did they know to be there? And why were they celebrating? The police arrested them and let them go into Israeli custody. Why? Building 7, a 47-story skyscraper and part of the World Trade Center complex was not struck by a plane but collapsed in 6.5 seconds at 5.20 p.m. on September the 11th in the exact manner of a controlled demolition. And why was U.S. military explosive thermate found in the dust of the World Trade Center? Here are some more recent examples of lying wonders. Four-star U.S. Army General Wesley Clark said that 10 years before 9-11, Paul Wolfowitz, the neocon architect of Bush's war on Iraq, told uh, General Clark of plans to clean out the Middle East and take over those Muslim nations. Just 10 days after 9-11, Clark was shown a Pentagon memo that describes how they plan to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and Iran. Five years and seven countries. This woman, Naomi Wolf, who said that it would be a 
hydra like uh, scheme and this hydra is uh, a multi headed monster that Hercules fought against but the strange thing about this monster is every time Hercules cut off a head the head would grow back America now is at war with Islam make no mistake about it every time they kill a leader of Islam another one rises why you can't kill or destroy Islam because Islam is the nature of God and it is the nature in which he has created this universe remember when Jesus came into Jerusalem riding the ass and the colt and the Jewish Sanhedrin said if we don't stop this man now the whole world will go after him is this why it led to his ultimate crucifixion is this what you all thought when you saw my call of a million black men and nearly two million showed up was your thought that you have to stop Farrakhan and the nation of Islam now before the whole world goes after us we traveled the world and you saw my acceptance in Africa Asia and in the Islamic world in the Caribbean in Central America and South America you saw this and in the Islamic world even in the holy of city of Mecca when we made Umrah or the lesser pilgrimage during the last 10 nights of Ramadan the Saudi government put a police escort for me and those with me and they escorted us from Jeddah to the Prophet's mosque in Medina and from Medina to Mecca and at the Kaaba in Mecca young people broke down barriers to come and touch me not out of hatred but out of love is this what you fear what is it about Islam that you fear and what is Islam the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us and all Islamic scholars bear witness that Islam is entire submission to do the will of God did not Moses submit his will to God did not Abraham the father of the righteous submit his will to God did not Jesus say not my will but thy will the Muslims in America are the most peaceful and productive they have contributed much to the development of this society in medicine in science in engineering in research and development the FBI has been infiltrating mosques and creating conditions to entrap Muslims and then you say through your media you have stopped terrorists this is all a part of your aim invoking a terrifying internal and external enemy Hugo Chavez who recently passed away wondered whether he was poisoned by the CIA I read that Americans are telling the opposition that they should not accept the results of the election in um, this government if Maduro wins why are you meddling in their affairs can anyone meddle in the affairs of American politics you seeing now that we're leading up to war again you need to really look at other media on your internet other than CNN and the corporate control media of America try Russian television Chinese television try Al Jazeera try um, press TV 
all of these stations will give you the same facts but another viewpoint. Kwame Ture, formerly known as Stokely Carmichael, believed that he was given cancer by the CIA. I have been battling cancer and it was known that I had it and when I flew to Washington to be treated for it at Howard University Hospital, the wife of Nelson Mandela, Sister Winnie Mandela, when she visited me said that it was announced in South Africa that I had passed and CNN and the New York Times were preparing to release uh, a statement that I had passed. What did they know? Well, brothers and sisters, by the grace of God, we are here. So in closing, I'd like to read to you from a prophecy of Babylon's doom from the 13th chapter of Isaiah. Raise a banner on a bare hilltop. Shout to them, beckon to them to enter the gates of the nobles. I have commanded those I prepared for battle. I have summoned my warriors to carry out my wrath, those who rejoice in my triumph. Listen, a noise on the mountains, like that of a great multitude. Listen, an uproar among the kingdoms, like nations massing together. The Lord Almighty is mustering an army for war. They come from faraway lands, from the ends of the heavens, the Lord and the weapons of his wrath to destroy Babylon, the whole country. Wail. For the day of the Lord is near. It will come like destruction from the Almighty. And because of this, all hands will go limp. Every heart will melt with fear. Terror will seize them. The day of the Lord is coming, a cruel day with wrath and fierce anger. The stars of the heavens and their constellations will not show their light. I will punish the world for its evil, the wicked for their sins. I will put an end to the arrogance of the haughty and will humble the pride of the ruthless. Yes, it is said that the soldiers coming will not spare the children or the fruit of the womb. You know, in closing, there was a song that Frank Sinatra sung it's called, I'm going to live until I die. It written by Mr. Hoffman, Kent and Curtis. And it goes like this. I'm going to live till I die. I'm going to laugh instead of cry. I'm going to take the town and turn it upside down. I'm going to live, live, live until I die. They're going to say, what a guy. I'm going to play for the sky. Ain't going to miss a thing. I'm going to have my fling. I'm going to live, live, live until I die. The blues I lay low, I'll make them stay low. They'll never trail over my head. I'll be a devil till I'm an angel. But until then, hallelujah, Gonna dance, gonna fly. I'll take a chance riding high before my number's up. Six, six, six. I'm gonna fill my cup. I'm gonna live, live, live until I die. Thank you for listening, and may Allah bless you with the light of understanding as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, Please log on again next week and every week this year for the time and what must be done. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Log on to NOI.org every Saturday, 6 p.m. Central Time for truth, guidance, and unequaled love from the National Representative of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Pass on the word every Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Time at NOI.org. The time and what must be done. Remember, to have Minister Farrakhan answer your questions, tweet them to at Louis Farrakhan.
hashtag Ask Farrakhan. And to add this message to your library or as a gift for someone you love, go to store.finalcall.com. <laughs>